Hello everyone and welcome to a very nice game uh, played in 1961 between uh, international master from Spain Roman Torran Albero and Mikael Tal. Now a few days ago my channel hit uh, 300,000 subscribers and as it is customary on this channel when we reach a certain milestone we will show a game played by Mikael Tal. Uh, as he's the sole protector of this channel you can see a very nice photo of him uh, up there on the right uh, ab above my head. Uh, and uh, I also mentioned that um, it, it'd be best to probably wait a few days ago and as on 18th of November Latvia is celebrating their 100th birthday uh, so 100 years ago uh, today uh, Latvia declared its independence and um, uh, I know what you're thinking uh, why uh, if, if uh, we did a video for when Estonia was celebrating their 100th birthday uh, and we've shown a very nice game uh, where Paul Karras uh, beats none other than Mikael Tal so here it would make sense to show a game where Mikael Tal beats uh, Paul Karras but we've already shown uh, such a very nice game during our coverage of the 1959 candidates uh, in case you haven't seen it or you just want to check it out in honor of Latvia's 100th birthday, it will be the first thing you will see in the description below. Uh, so, uh, Paul Karras versus Mikael Tal during the 1959 candidates. Uh, and also, uh, I like to remind everyone uh, after we reach a certain milestone, uh, there will be also a link in the description below. It will be the second link you see in the description. Uh, it is uh, my video for uh, that I created for celebrating when my channel reached 1,000 subscribers. Uh, so it's always nice to you know get back and uh, see how it all uh, started happening. Uh, and it is also a very nice reminder to perhaps uh, some of you who are interested in doing YouTube. Uh, don't uh, you know. Uh, uh, get too worked up about uh, what your audio quality is like, what your video quality is like, uh, because that video, if you check it out, you will see that uh, I'm not even using a camera, I'm using a $2 microphone, uh, and I haven't really prepared all that much, I just uh, came like really tired after a long day at work, and uh, I decided to show a very nice tall game uh, on the internet. So that being said, uh, I'm sure you're in Latvia, uh, in Riga, in, in the capital of Latvia, you're having uh, like a great party today, uh, I can only imagine. Uh, I've seen that, um, uh, I've read, uh, I will also include a link to uh, a website that uh, talks more about uh, how Latvia will celebrate this great milestone. Uh, I've read that it will not be only like uh, a huge uh, celebration in, in Riga, but also in the four regions of Latvia, and also they are preparing um, a tour around the world uh, uh, giving all, all, all different uh, kinds of programs. Uh, they are planning 900 different programs uh, around the world and uh, most of them will be free and available on television. So surely uh, if you are enjoying this you know feel free to send a few photos I will definitely show it um, in, in tomorrow's video or, or when I feel, appropri feel it appropriate. Uh, but that being said, uh, here we have a, a very nice game. Uh, it was played, like we already mentioned, in 1961 uh, in the in the second European uh, champ uh, team championship, and uh, the the championship was won by Soviet Union, and that's not very surprising. Uh, just uh, to show you how uh, <laughs> very not surprising it was, uh, this is the team that. Um, uh, came uh, representing the Soviet Union. So on board one you have Mikhail Botvinnik, then Mikhail Tal, uh, board three Paul Keres, board four Tigran Petrosian, Vasily Smyslov, Viktor Korchnoi, Effingeller, Mark Taimanov, Lav Pologevsky, uh, Semen Furman, and as uh, substitute boards Alexander Tolush and Vladimir Bagirov. So this is like a really scary team and it's not really uh, a surprise that they won first place. Uh, and already you can see that uh, currently my channel is now on 305,000 subscribers. So really, really uh, a nice growth. You know, if, if this continues, uh, T-Series will not be the only thing PewDiePie will have to worry about. Uh, obviously that, that, is a, that is a joke, but uh, you know, uh, steadily growing. Uh, I, I, I enjoy it and uh, thank you all very much for that. Uh, so on to the game. Uh, like we said, Tal faces Roman Toran Albero, uh, one of the strongest uh, international masters in Spain at that time. Uh, he he won the Spanish championship twice and he represented Spain in uh, plenty of uh, uh, Olympic competitions. Uh, so let's check out this very nice game. Uh, Roman opens with c4 uh, and Tal replies with e5. So going after the center, which is definitely a very principled decision. Uh, we have knight to c3 and now d6. Uh, let me just fix that. Uh, g3, uh, preparing to fianchetto the light square bishop, and now f5 by Tal. 
d4 uh, an early strike in the center and here Tal has to make a decision whether he just wants to continue developing maybe bishop to e7 maybe knight to f6 uh, maybe even capture uh, if you capture for example pawn captures here then queen captures on d4 and it, you will not be able to push away the queen just yet with knight c6 uh, it was uh, very important to play knight f6 before that. Here, if you just develop a knight with an attack on the queen, then queen to e3 could be very unpleasant. Uh, after black defense, knight d5, and now already uh, black will have some problems developing because you can't just continue knight f6. Uh, white will capture your uh, bishop is pinned here. You will have to uh, ruin your king side. Uh, so here, after d4, uh, Tal uh, doesn't go into all of this. He rather pushes uh, e4. Uh, unlike in uh, a game, uh, Victor Korchno yesterday, he decided to release the tension in the center a bit early. Uh, here, Tal decides to complicate things. Uh, we have f3, uh, wanting to resolve the situation in the center immediately, and now Tal continues developing, knight to f6. Uh, bishop to g2, and now comes e captures on f3. Knight captures on f3, and now g6. And here, white castles. So now, as you can see, Tal didn't achieve all that much uh, out of the opening. If anything, he's, he's even worse. As uh, his king is still stuck in the center, he, he didn't really develop any of his pieces, as you can see. And uh, white already has two knights in the game, a very nice fianchettled bishop. Uh, the rook occupies a semi-open uh, f-file. And, uh, okay, the f-file is closed for the moment, but uh, white will be able to, uh, to break it open with e4 uh, uh, anytime he pleases. Uh, Tal goes a bishop to g7, the uh, Fianchettos, his uh, dark square bishop, prepares the castle, and as his king is still in the center, white uh, makes a very principled decision, and he plays e4. He wants to open up uh, the lines of attack as Tal's king is still, still in the center. Uh, f captures on e4 by Tal, and now we have knight to g5, opening up now a triple attack against the d4 pawn, so he will be able to get it back. Uh, also, uh, the bishop is uh, very strong here. You have to be careful. If this pawn uh, is recaptured, then this diagonal becomes very strong. Uh, ideas like bishop to d5 will be available in the future. This knight will perhaps be able to go to, to e6 to f7. It's a very dangerous position for Tal. But Tal doesn't mind. We have castle. Oops, not king f8. We have castles by Tal. Uh, and here, uh, white has to make a decision. Okay, you're playing the former world champion. Uh, I say former because this game was played in uh, June of 1961 and Tal already resolved the matters with Botvinnik in, in March of 1961. So here Tal is already a former world champion, uh, and here knight captures on g4 was played. Uh, but it was played uh, using the knight from g5. Uh, a slight improvement would have been knight c captures on e4. Uh, why uh, Mr. Albero decided not to go with this uh, is very interesting. Uh, of, of course you always have to consider what happens if h6 is played. Uh, but here such a thing wouldn't be possible. If h6 here, uh, this loses by force uh, due to knight captures uh, on f6 with check. Uh, bishop captures and bishop to d5 check. Now the bishop is controlling both e6 and f7 and after uh, the king moves, uh, now of course uh, you see the move, how this hypothetical line uh, could have finished. If not, feel free to pause the video, it's actually a very nice puzzle. Uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations, uh, you are once again an excellent solver of uh, hypothetical lines that never actually happened, uh, but not knight to e6 or anything like that, it's actually bishop captures on b7, uh, a very nice idea, <laughs> simply trying to take away the e6 square, uh, because if bishop captures then knight e6 wins the queen, uh, and if uh, bishop doesn't capture then you're just gonna have to capture a knight and then you lose the rook on a8 and now white is really winning this game. Uh, so, uh, when deciding whether to recapture the pawn with the g5 knight or the c3 knight, perhaps the c3 knight was a, a slight improvement. Uh, but okay, knight g captures on e4, we have knight captures on e4, rook captures on f8, we have queen captures on f8, and now knight captures on e4. So okay, uh, white is still better, uh, uh, slightly in development, and uh, Tal still has to figure out how to properly develop his queen side. And he decides, uh, he, d he does it in the best way possible. Uh, knight to c6, going after the d4 pawn, uh, forcing white's reply, bishop to e3, defending the d4 pawn, and now we have bishop to f5. So uh, Tal just has to get his uh, last piece into the game, the rook on a8, and his uh, forces will be fully mobilized. Uh, queen to d2, white also wants to do the same, he wants to bring his rook into the game, uh, ideas like rook to, bishop to h6 might be possible in the future if the queen moves and if uh, the pressure against the d4 pawn will not be so great. Uh, Tal develops, rook to e8, and now with a double attack on this knight, and here, uh, 
uh, you have to really decide how to properly play this position. Uh, in the game, knight to g5 was played, as the knight is now attacked twice. But again, a slight improvement for white would have been rook to f1. Uh, not allowing bishop to capture as the queen uh, would be hanging on f8. Uh, but uh, it's not an easy choice to make, because here after queen to e7, now there's a triple attack against the knight. Uh, and of course you can't move it, because the bishop would be under attack. Uh, but here, a move white most likely didn't see, because uh, if he had a rook to f1 is a slight improvement to what was played, bishop to f2 would have been a very nice move. Because now if captures, captures, and captures, uh, then rook to e1 is very strong. The, if the queen moves, uh, you, you either have to move the queen or and then lose the rook on, e, uh, on e8 with check. Uh, king moves, and now you just escape uh, with... Uh, uh, sorry about that, being the exchange up. Uh, and if not, after rook to e1, uh, you can simply capture the rook and claim that uh, you will be uh, that this is playable after knight captures on d4, uh, simply because you have uh, a, a rook and a knight for the queen. Uh, but uh, okay, after rook to e8, white doesn't find the strong rook f1. He goes knight to g5, simply getting the knight out of the way. Uh, and here, uh, black uh, really should act immediately. There's really no time uh, for moves like queen to e7 now. White will just be able to develop. Uh, but as this is a, a tile game I'm showing you, you of course know what tile decided to play. But it's a very intriguing move. <clears throat> uh, tile played rook captures on e3. And uh, now of course you can't capture on e3. If you capture it, then of course bishop captures will win you the queen and the game. Uh, but it's interesting what Tal actually allows by playing rook captures on e3. Here Tal allows bishop to d5 check. And okay, this was played in the game. You don't have the option of uh, returning uh, the material with rook to e6. Uh, if you do this, then bishop captures, bishop captures, knight captures, and after the queen moves you will simply grab the bishop as well. And now uh, you are uh, up in material, uh, you have, you're up the exchange, and uh, you will have no problems winning this game. Uh, so here, after bishop to d5, Tal actually allowed this, king to h8, and now his opponent just played knight to f7. Uh, already feeling very good about himself, uh, I have Tal in a deadlock, I'm just gonna continue checking him. Uh, because here, if king g8, then knight to h6 check, it's a double check from the bishop and the knight. Uh, and uh, here, uh, Roman Toran Albero was most likely hoping for a perpetual... Uh, uh, a draw by perpetual check. Uh, but Tal had something else in mind when he played rook captures on e3. Here, Tal simply played queen captures on f7. As, uh, I mean, it is only a queen. Uh, bishop captures on f7 and now comes rook to d3. Uh, rook to d3, a very nice move. Uh, you could also start with bishop captures on d4, which would most likely uh, result uh, in, a, in a similar position as when rook to d3 is played. Uh, but this is something Tal often does in his games. When you can achieve the exact same position uh, via different moves, you always want to play the move that allows your opponent to make as many mistakes as possible. Here, uh, it, it's not such a, an occasion. Here, queen to e2 was played, which is the best reply from white. Uh, but uh, white could have easily tried something like queen to f4, and then he would face a bishop captures on d4 check, uh, king moves, and now bishop to e3. Uh, an attacking move on the queen, and after queen to h4, uh, guarding against the bishop to h3, and also threatening queen to f6 checkmate, king to g7 defending, and now whatever move white makes, rook to d4 will simply trap the white queen. So whatever you play here doesn't really matter, rook d4 traps the queen, and it is all over. Uh, but okay, uh, white played the correct response, queen to e2, and now we have bishop captures on d4 with check. King g2, and now comes knight to e5, closing away the e-file from the white queen, and uh, as you can see, Tal's forces are, you know, uh, uh, happily hanging out uh, in, in front of uh, Mr. Albero's king, and it's not a very pleasant position to play with white. You have to decide how to approach this. Here, rook to d1 was played, uh, trying to get uh, a nice rook exchange here. Uh, if you go for something like bishop to d5, which is, again, a very interesting move, uh, black will respond with c6, simply getting trying to get your bishop out of the way, and then you could try rook to d1. Uh, and here, after pawn captures, uh, rook captures, and bishop captures on d3, uh, queen moves and bishop to e4 check, you will now have two bishops and a knight for the queen. Still uh, a much more enjoyable uh, game for, for black. It would be, it's hard to say if white could wiggle out of this one. Uh, but uh, bishop to d5 was not the idea that was played here. Rook to d1 was played and now Tal again avoids the rook trade. We have rook to e3. 
and uh, we reach uh, the final moments of the game with with queen to d2 black uh, white could still uh, have hoped to try something here uh, but after the move that was played in the game queen to f1 uh, here it is now all over uh, but feel free to pause the video here and win this game for Tal and uh, you know help us uh, celebrate this uh, Latvia's 100th birthday properly and also this milestone of me reaching 300,000 subscribers. Uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations, uh, you know, uh, let's get this party started and for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, uh, here Tal played bishop to e4 check. And now there's really not all that much you can do here. You don't want to go to g1 as then you're going to face uh, a lot of nasty discoveries. Uh, so h1 is off limits due to the bishop. You have to go to h3. Uh, then comes rook to f3. Uh, your queen is under attack but also the bishop on f7 is hanging now. Not so important now because your bishop on d4 is also hanging. Uh, here queen to e2 was played and now Tal simply finishes it off with another bishop to f5 check. And it was in this position that international uh, uh, master from Spain, uh, Roman Toron Albero, resigned the game. Uh, as now, if you go back with king to g2, then we have the exact same position we had a few moves ago, only the rook is not on d3, the rook is on f3. And now a move like rook to f2 is, is definitely possible. Uh, because now after uh, queen captures, bishop captures, king captures, you will face knight captures on f7. Uh, black will be uh, up in material, he will have a knight and a bishop for a rook, and also he will be up a pawn, so an easily winning endgame. Uh, and uh, an even greater idea comes after this bishop to f5 check if white continues with uh, king to h4. Uh, what Tal had in mind here is actually bishop to e3, and here, uh, whatever, <laughs> whatever move white plays, it's over. Uh, uh, the G uh, bishop to e3 move takes away the g5 square from the white king, and now whatever you try and play, let's say you play rook to f1, then it's a forced sequence, g5 check, king to h5, bishop to g4 check, king to h6, and now uh, a nice checkmate with a knight, knight captures on f7, uh, white, uh, the white king has nowhere to go, bishop is covering h5, uh, pawn is covering g6, and of course these squares are covered by the king, so uh, a wonderful checkmate, and uh, I I'm definitely, definitely going to use this uh, for the thumbnail of this video. So yeah, uh, there you have it. Uh, Roman Toran Albero versus Mikal Tal, 1961 European Team Championship. Uh, once again, uh, we can we can marvel uh, <laughs> the lineup uh, the Soviet Union uh, brought uh, to uh, to represent them. Truly really a, a a magnificent team. And uh, I would like to thank uh, Karol Ercegovic, uh, David Turnbull, uh, Jacek Kalamart, uh, Patrick Loria, and John Malpas for your contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. Uh, do check out everything I mentioned in the description below, uh, Tal's game uh, against Paul Karras in the 1959 Candidates Tournament, uh, my video for when my channel reached 1,000 subscribers, uh, it's, um, you know, uh, it feels uh, weird asking you to watch it as it's a pretty bad video, uh, but, you know, it might actually get you motivated when you see, uh, you know, uh, the evolution of my channel from there then until now. Uh, and uh, yeah, also check out the link for the official Latvia 100th uh, anniversary and the program it offers if you are anywhere in the vicinity. Uh, and yeah, uh, thank you all for being such excellent subscribers. And uh, I haven't uh, decided yet will there be uh, like a Lee Chess tournament or, or a tournament somewhere else or <clears throat> or how we will uh, celebrate this. But I don't know, it's, it's, it seems like too early to celebrate. You know, I maybe maybe better wait just for the 500,000 uh, subscriber milestone, uh, but we'll see. Uh, you know, feel free to offer your suggestions as usual. So yeah, uh, that's the game. I do hope you enjoyed it. Uh, as usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you soon. Uh, the next game we will show, of course, is Game 7 of the 2018 World Chess Championship match. Uh, thank you all, and I will see you soon.